Hey, Kim, how are you? I'm fabulous. How are you, Devinder? I'm doing good. So I know a lot about you, and I think we connected almost a year back, and now almost every day we chat, well, <laughs> excluding weekend. <laughs> so probably you want to give a small introduction, like what you've been doing in this online world for the last, say, five, six years. and Yeah, it's it's been over 10 years now, which I can't believe. So I will give you the Cliff Notes version, but basically started out, I, I, I'm going, formerly known as the WordPress chick, I fell in love with WordPress, ended up with, a, you know, a site building business, essentially, created outsourcing, had a team, I did coaching, but I always really wanted to do content marketing and information marketing. I started my podcast in 2013, the WordPress chick podcast, which is now the Kim Doyle show. Um, but that changed everything for me. It was, it was my personality got to come through. I got to show up genuinely as myself and the relationships that, that I gained from that. So, you know, the last year and a half have been interesting. I really, I came to this very clear decision that I needed to stop the site work and I was going to launch a SaaS. That took way longer than expected. It launched, it shut down. That's another story. Um, but yeah, like everything I do now is around content marketing and, my two hashtags, which are just show up, because I think that if you just genuinely show up where you are, as you are, that's what's going to, that's the only differentiating factor we have. And then of course, everything is content. So I'm pretty much all about content marketing these days. So you've been known as the WordPress chick and you have mm -hmm. shed, you have shed that tag <laughs> and gone to Kim Dale as a name, KimDale.com, right? So yep. what made you decide on that switch because it's not a small decision considering that you have had the WordPress stick for quite a long time now. Yeah, I, I think I always felt like an imposter in that space, to be honest with you, that I fell in love with WordPress. It was so organic the way it happened. And I realized, oh, I can, I can do this stuff and not the coding so much, but I can figure out you know, how to do certain things with WordPress. I can make it easy for the everyday user to understand, oh, this is how you do this. And so I just, it was, it was kind of a happy accident, right? Like I just went with it and I kept going with it and it was a good name. I knew that like, you know, and it, it's just, I found myself doing a ton of work I didn't want to do. And I keep using this line and it is that I would rather be the star than the producer, right? And doing site work and all of that, it's like, you're constantly working on someone else's business. And I'm not negating that. It it's just doesn't, it's not me. And I've always been a creator. I've always had this very creative bent to me. I was an art major for a while. I mean, I was a speech major too. Like I spoke at my high school graduation. I love this piece. I'm more outgoing, although I need a lot of time to myself too. So it was, I just came to this conclusion. It was, I'd had this outsourcing company and somebody else was canceling. I had people on retainers. I had designers and developers on retainers. And I thought, this is a clear sign. Like, I thought I was going to launch this SaaS, which it, I, I guess it did launch. But, um, and so I thought, um, it's time to cut the cord. And I had been, probably the last year of the WordPress check, I really had been doing more content marketing, marketing, business, online stuff anyways. So you were um, getting those signals already. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, I was talking to WordPress people, my friends. I've got this amazing, you know, community of friends. But at the same time, I... It didn't get me excited anymore. I wasn't having fun with it anymore. So besides this change from WP Chick to Kim Dell, I think the other important thing that you are getting known for these days is your Facebook group, which is content creators. Like, mm -hmm. how did that happen? Like, because a lot of people create Facebook groups, but not many get attention, not just in terms of number of people who are there, but... I am referring to the engagements because a lot of people would have like 10,000 people in there, but there will be zero engagement or very less engagement. But if you go to content creators group, there is so much engagement and true engagement. Like people really think it's their home for getting things done or maybe probably sharing and learning new things. Yeah, that was another kind of happy accident, to be honest with you, Devender, because and I, I hope people pick this up. And you and I have talked about this in a lot of our conversations that when you do something with the right intention without the attachment to what kind of money it's going to bring you, it tends to blow up. And everything I've done with the very little attention to income has worked. So content creators, 
It, well, let me, let me back that up because I originally was like, okay, I'm going to do, I think, a membership around this and what could I do? And I had someone helping me with the group at the time, but, you know, he was always like, oh, well, we need to wait for this or that. And I just, I let go of what it was supposed to be. And I thought, I'm just going to commit to showing up. I didn't have a plan for, okay, I'm going to do this, this day, this, this day, this, this day. And I just told myself, I, I did this, let me back up a little bit. Probably 2016 is when I had started doing the daily emails, which I don't do right now, but it was all about mastery for me. I thought I'm going to show myself that I can commit to doing this. I'm going to get better at the craft of writing and, and copy and, and play with that. So I thought I'm going to do this here. I'm just going to commit to growing this group organically. I'm going to trust and I'm going to show up. And it's when you find that right thing, because I, I had another group with uh, around WordPress, but again, never really where I wanted to be. And so because this is like my happy place, it is so easy for me to show up and have fun and have conversations. And you know what I realized too was that a year later, I'm like, wow, I've, I've been doing this organically, committed to real connections and real relationships, providing value. I was like, oh, okay. And I've made offers in the group. And they've been supported because of how much I give. It was, it was such a natural, easy thing to vendor because I, I love it. And I felt like this is my tribe. People who show up and give value to other people in that group. I'm like, these are my people, right? So then it inspires me to want to do more. And so I, I honestly think it was, I knew I was committed to sticking with it. I wasn't attached because trust me, there are plenty of other groups to your point where I'm like, oh gosh, they had 7,000 members in three months and it took me a year to get to 2,000. But at the same time, I just, I'm going to, I trust, I can't worry about vanity metrics anymore. And plus, I mean, I'm a part of groups where there is good engagement. It's almost like a cult, but I don't want that either. I want this to be a community. It's not like mine, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, because if you feel good about a place, you feel like contributing more in a more natural way because I can really relate to this because when I had a group, even though I didn't create a new group, I had a group basic WP for a quite long time. But when I changed the branding to web creators, I almost felt like it's my new home. Like I need to share, you know, create new things. And suddenly there's a spurt in number of people joining, engaging. So I guess connection is very important. You need to feel good about things you do. And I guess that's the re big reason of you going from the WP check to the Kim Dayal brand itself. It is. And you know, again, <laughs> I'm probably gonna keep saying this because we talk about a lot of stuff offline or on messenger. And I, I think that there's this element to an online business that a lot of people don't do or address, which is sort of that personal internal work. And so if you back up and say, you know, how do I want to be online? How do I want to show up? What is the type of work that makes me happy? Where do I have fun? What resonates with me? What doesn't resonate with me? And you back up and it feels like, oh, that's all fluffy woo-woo stuff that doesn't count. I have to do the work. I have to take action. I have to implement. Yes, you have to do all of those things. But I mean, I took action on plenty of things that I didn't enjoy doing and they never got traction. It, it's just, I'm not afraid to do the work, but if you, it's that self-awareness piece that Gary Vee talks about. It's like, you've got to really get clear with what do I like to do? How do I like to do it? What kind, how does this fit into my life? Like, here's a great example, Devinder, is that when I think about the SaaS that I was doing, if I back up and you heard the podcast on why I ended that, but I'm like, I was 50% responsible for that too. Cause at the end of the day, I don't want that much responsibility. You know, I mean, that's a big commitment and I don't want to be on my laptop doing support and how to do it at night and doing all, all work at night when I'm inspired. But, but I, I look at how does my business fit into my life and I can show up in content creators all day long. It yeah. never feels like work until I get like, okay, I just need to get off the computer, <laughs> but otherwise it never, I just, it's fun. It fits in with who I am. Yeah, even when you're off computer, there's a phone in the bed, you know, content creators can still be accessed. <laughs> I know. And I'm responding to some defenders like, go to bed. It's like 1130. I'm like, I, and that's a whole, like Kim needs to find a little bit. I'm like, I think I need to put the, the phone in my bathroom or something. Yeah. Okay. Now let's talk about branding. You know, a lot of people delay in starting a new thing primarily because they're confused on one very basic point. Even I've been confused on that. Like, 
personal brand versus a generic brand like you had a generic brand name like the wp chick and you went from generic to your personal brand name kim dayal now you made the transition but when someone is start starting as new there's always a confusion should i put my name forward or should i put a generic brand name with me as a person behind it like how do you address this confusion to a person who wants to start something new but then confused whether my name or the generic name yeah it's the self awareness piece again right and here's the other piece is that like for me in transitioning to the wordpress from the wordpress check to my i wasn't ready to to show up as kim doyle online i mean i i really i trust all of that organically and i i i knew that i wasn't sure where i fit in after 10 years or 9 years of doing that it was like and i had to address this before like i wanted to do kim doyle god 5 years ago it took me that long so but if you're starting out i think you have to decide am i willing to show up as the personal brand and i i believe like i shared an article that was on medium about a guy who said you know in a couple of years time you do need to have a personal brand you should have a personal something yeah. online right and so i think one it depends on the business because if you're doing like agency work i don't think you need to be a personal brand should you have one possibly if that's where you're going um you know so it's kind of like i look at like lee jackson right i mean lee could easily be a personal brand and he's got people associate him with his brand um he's got that personality he's got that in that unique piece that is a solid personal brand not everybody wants to do that so i think you have to one decide what am i willing to do and show up and how what kind of commitment am i willing to give and then it's you have to trust because i i think a lot of people do start with a brand and then they or a, a a generic name and they shift to a personal brand through the learning i mean this whole online thing i mean how how old is it really like all of this stuff right i mean it, you think about how much has changed just in the last 10 years online and so you got to get clear again and that's doing that internal personal work i can't begin to tell you how much of that stuff i started doing uh like a couple years ago i'd been in high masterminds i'd done all the i should charge 7 10,000 for this i'm not negating that price point at all but i was still in a space of not doing work i totally love so it was like i was trying to create a high ticket offer for the sake of having a high ticket offer versus yeah. who i am and how my life works and so it's okay i i think it, you have to step back and say i'm going to master the fundamentals and that's what i did after i got out of that space i thought i'm going to get better at copy i'm going to get better at kind of the consistent i want to get better at email marketing i want to get better at promoting my stuff so you have to decide i mean there i wish i could give you like a blanket answer but there isn't one I mean it comes with self awareness and and you have to be tell yourself the truth like what am i willing to do am i in this for the long game because a personal brand it's a lot easier to hide behind a generic name than a personal brand so you know personal brand is a big step saying i'm here and i'm going all in and it's a long game all of it's a long game so while building your personal brand what were the main challenges that you face like one challenge that is there for everyone is the imposter syndrome like am i good enough <laughs> because this is there for everyone even someone who has achieved something this still creeps in like when i launch something like i launch a course or something for first two days you know that imposter syndrome will come back haunting you you know uh, is it good enough that you putting out so what are the challenges that you faced while not just transitioning but building this Kim Dayal as a brand name. I think the biggest challenge was owning that it was time. It, yeah. And I you know what's funny is I had it's like I went to a uh, funnel hacking live earlier this year and a couple friends that I hadn't seen what are you doing and I told them they're like finally like finally you did this because it was just it was time. So I think it was that and then saying goodbye like the WordPress chick will always have like this special place in my heart. I'm always going to keep the domain names, right? Forward it to Kim Doyle but but it was time to say i'm ready to step into something new and while it's relative right it's all digital marketing and stuff i i think the biggest challenge was being willing to own it and really step in there and again i think any the challenges are all, the challenges are all going to be personal unique individual things right like either a fear of being on video or i don't have enough to say or can i keep this content going and the the big pivot for me happened when and i did this with wordpress like the wordpress chick 
I was able to grow that when I finally said, well, I'm not a coder. That's not my thing. And I'm going to help everyday people. Then it was really easy. So then when I started doing more of just show up, I'm going to be me, everything is content and just genuinely, and it worked and I got results from doing that. Then it was easy. It's like, okay, now I just have to be me and do the work. Like it's, it's a lot easier. So when you're building a new brand, like one thing is given that you will write content, you will produce content in the form of video, audio, text, maybe courses, etc. But there are other moving parts in the whole setup. Like in today's world, you got to have sales funnel, lead magnets, email sequences, like which things you gave the most priority or what should be the first thing besides the real content that you're writing in promoting that content in making that content visible to people or to your target audience because promotion and marketing is more important than just producing content because Mm -hmm. so so which all things fit in your marketing scheme to flourish your brand further well this is the this is the live stream that you and i did right and you have to have an audience you have to have an audience and it makes me crazy and this only i get a little bit ranty with this simply because I did this to myself. I was horrible about promoting myself, putting myself out there. I'd like put something on Facebook once and be like, okay, I don't want to bug anybody, right? And the email stuff. And at the end of the day, I feel good in promoting myself because I give a lot, okay? So with all of those pieces, you have to decide that it doesn't matter how good my sales funnel is. It doesn't matter what software I use. It doesn't matter how great the sales page will convert. If I have no one to sell that to, then I'm screwed, right? I could spend $2,000 on a course on how to build a phenomenal membership, but the course isn't going to do me any good if I have no audience. And so the bottom line is you have to focus on connecting, engaging, and growing your audience. So whether that is, I still will always believe in email marketing. I'm always going to do it because there's a different level with that. You know, I'm totally getting into Messenger too but you have to have people that you've connected with. And the best way to do that is through conversations, right? And it's not being afraid. I say this all the time, like, let's hop on Skype or let's have a conversation. I also, you know, I'm very picky about, well, do I want to do this with somebody or should, should they be paying for coaching or consulting? But the whole thing is you have to focus on building audience. So you create the content and then it's consistent promotion and paying attention. Here's a great example. And I'm going to talk about one of the tools later. So I bought that Beamer app, right? For anybody watching or listening, it's this little sidebar that comes in and you can highlight stuff on your site. So I bought it through the AppSumo thing too. And I was like, originally I bought it for the SaaS product. And then I was talking to a friend, Lorraine, and she said, I was kind of surprised at how this works. So, so I thought, okay, Kim, test this, just put it up. So I put it up last night on my site. I was quite pleased with the amount of views and click throughs to the brand new work with me page, which I haven't still fully announced to my list. But I was like, okay, this works, this works, right? And so you have to be willing, you know, whether it's a pop-up or an exit pop or, or paid traffic, but you have to have an audience. So figure out, you've got your content. Don't be afraid to put two or three opt-in offers on a page. We don't need to be Neil Patel and do 14, like some of his <laughs> get a little squirrely, right? But you have to ask people. You have to remind them to to do something. Hey, if you love this, be sure to grab my course. If you like this, make sure to listen to the podcast. You know, at the end of the podcast, I've started doing this much more frequently. Like, and if you're not a member of content creators, be sure to join the Facebook group. We just hit this many members. We're doing it. Like you have to be telling people if you're not going to promote yourself, nobody else will. Yeah. Neil Patel example was really cool because when, when you land on his site, either you end up giving your email address or you uh, wow, take a vow not to come back again because you get bombarded. So in so many different ways, like this pop up, that pop up, every pop up type of it is there. Okay. On a serious note, let's talk about money. Now, when you switched from the WP check to Kim Dural, I'm sure there was a dip in the revenue or the money that you were making. Now, when you do branding, in the end, you got to make money, whether you're building a new brand or you're pursuing the existing brand. So how does one ensure, if not all, but majority of your branding efforts result in some planned revenue to the business that you're representing? Yeah, I think you have to, again, this is that self-awareness piece. I hit a point, Vendor, and I don't know if I've ever told you this, like I was ready to get a job over doing websites <laughs> anymore. I was just done. I'm like, I don't enjoy this. 
I feel resentful. Like I could sell the word, the, the site. I like doing the podcast service better um, and it had a better return. But at the same time, it was just, I felt resentful. Like I want to do my own thing. And so, and don't get me wrong for anybody. I have bootstrapped the bucket out of my life. Like I have cut stuff out, but I have never been as happy in my business as I have this last year and a half, to be honest with you. I have enjoyed what I've done a hundred times more than before. So that element, I mean, you know, I'm not going to give financial advice. I've been down my own financial road to hell and back, but you have to pick your priorities. I think you got to get really clear on, am I willing, you know, like Gary Vee always says, you know, eat, I'm not going to swear on your show, but eat crap for, you know, for 10 years or whatever. But it's like, are you willing to, to, to drop this over here to, to, to get the quality of life you want? So the point, okay. So with the branding, so with Kim Doyle, I now remember in the last, I don't know, entire year and a half, I thought that the software was coming. Okay. So there was always that in the back of my head. But then I realized, wow, I've built this amazing community. Well, of course I can do a membership. This is silly. Why on earth wouldn't I do it? I've already shown. And that the only reason I never did, because one, when I was in the WordPress space, I thought, I do not want to get stuck in how to do this and how to do that. I, it's not who I am. So I never did that. But then I realized I have been giving away like so much, which I don't mind, but let's take it up a notch, right? And do something that's a paid content membership. So as you're going through this, again, it all comes back to self-awareness. What are you willing to do? And I, because of how I've shown up in that group, like when I did the content creator summit, um, I've done everything as content course. I've sold more because of that community in the first six months of this year than I probably did through the WordPress chick in the previous five. And now I'm not talking about, you know, service work or because I had podcast sponsorships at time. I had some great, I did had plenty of revenue coming there. And I had a couple clients that were on retainer for, uh, podcast production and stuff, but I just, I don't know. So it's, it's been a struggle. There's, there's no denying that, that I have struggled it. And I don't mean like, Oh my God, but it's been tough. It's not been fun all the time, but then I'll get an email from somebody that's like, thank you for helping me think about content differently. And I realize I just need to show up. Like I can't tell you how excited that makes me. So when you're doing this, you have to step back and say, what is most important to me? And so for me, it was like, I want recurring revenue because I had that right with the outsourcing company. I had recurring revenue every month and there's a cushion that that allows you. So I, again, I thought it was going to be the software and now it's like, okay, let's get this membership going. So there's that. I'm now offering coaching because it's very easy to do a one-off session or three months and then I can turn it on and off based on, you know, other stuff going on. And then I have a secret project that you know about, but you know, when you're doing the personal brand, you have to really figure out what am I good at? What can I commit to doing well? And where can I provide the most value? And like courses, I like doing courses too, but I like the idea of a membership better because I can do, well, here's a training on this. And then on anchor, let's say, and then in six months when anchor updates, I don't have to redo a course. I can just do a new training for that month. Like we're mm -hmm. going to do a bonus thing or this or that. So, you know, it's, um, you, again, it's self-awareness to vendor. And I think you have to look at where do you, What's your minimum needs? What do you need to do to get your needs met? And then how quickly can you make an offer? I will say this because I didn't transition, remember, to the personal brand until this year. Yeah. Like I kept talking about it and I kept talking, like I thought about maybe I should sell the WordPress chick and it was like, but it's me. Like my name was on the site. I couldn't really do that. And so there was a lot of thoughts around that. And it wasn't until this year that I finally went, pull the trigger and I mean, I just got done. Like I went into every single post that I kept and I did a redirect, not just the HTAC. I was going to tell you that. So, like in the next week or two, WordPress ship will forward to Kim Doyle. Like it is going to be done. <laughs> so, you know, I don't know if I answered your question, but the, the monetization of a personal brand, you have to decide what do I need? I mean, look at the numbers, right? A lot of us, a lot of people I know, I, oh gosh, you kind of have this ballpark in your head of what I need. Put it on pen and paper. What can, what can I get rid of? how long can I bootstrap or should I build up a better cushion or whatever it is, but um, look at what you need and then what you can commit to. So I hope that answered your question. You mentioned podcast sponsorship. So is it coming back? I, I don't see sponsorship now for the new Kim Dale show podcast. Um, I don't, honestly, I think that I may just sponsor it with my own stuff in a way. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A like, lot, lot of people do that these days. 
Yeah. If, if I can, I think I'd rather not do it. Um, but I wouldn't say, I, can't, I won't say no to it. Right. I mean, with this secret project I'm doing, there's a whole lot of fun opportunities there. Ooh, secret. So it is. I'm very excited. <laughs> you know what it is. You're one of very, I think you're the only person online that I've told about this. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's, you know, and that's coming quickly. So I don't know, it's, it's kind of valuable real estate and transitioning, you know, because I had a window where I wasn't podcasting there when I was going from the WordPress chick to Kim Doyle show, even though, I mean, I kept all the episodes, it's the same subscription channel and stuff. Um, right now it's more about getting people back into the show and getting that regular. So I, I don't, I don't think so, but I don't know. Yeah. And you, you just said that I will just sponsor my own products and all that. No, there's a question related. A lot of people these days are making sub brands or uh, I think this is term that I've created nano brands, like you have content creators group. So it is a brand in itself, like content creators, right? And then there are people who would create a course, say $2,000 course or $1,000 course, and they will brand it properly. Like they will register a domain name and they will put a big uh, fancy landing page. Some would redirect. So a lot of people are now creating sub brands out of small things that they are selling or whether they are free or paid. How do you think that does it help in selling or making customer understand the proposition? No, I think what I would recommend, and it's, you know, like when I, all my stuff, any courses free or paid all sits in Kajabi, right? That's where the membership will sit in Kajabi. And so I like having the custom domain <clears throat> to forward yeah. to stuff, but I don't think it's necessary to go create a, a, a subdomain, you know, like a sub brand or whatever you want to call it, because I mean, you're confusing people and it's, it's, it starts getting hard as you know, like managing multiple brands and sites where it's like, okay, this content goes here, this content goes here. Whereas, okay, so I've got Kim Doyle and if I've got secret project that will have its own domain because it's something I've never done before. I thought you were but going I, to say the name of it. I know. I almost, <laughs> I know. I was, like, ah. no, I, was I was actually just taking the lips movement. I thought you will just spill out. <laughs> No, nope, I'm going to, I'm going to, lips are still on that. Probably just till September, it'll be coming. But for the most part, nah, I, I think get the domains if you can for your projects and, and, and courses or, or whatever you're doing. Um, but no, I don't think it's necessary at all. I, and again, if you're, del- you're pulling traffic away from your primary domain, yeah. which you can feed it elsewhere. So that's my two cents. Okay. One important aspect of building authority brand is reaching out and connecting with influencers, successful people in your niche. So how should one reach out and connect with someone very popular to get the attention? Well, it's, it's a, it's a give first, right? It's, I had a mentor one time that used this term that I used then in my free course called value deposits, right? It's like drop the value as much as you can and here's a great example. I did a coaching call, like a one-off session with a, with a guy yesterday. And hands down, we were talking about his stuff. I said, because he said, God, he hit a wall and he's young, like in his mid-20s, where he just said, I got so overwhelmed with everything I'm supposed to be doing online. And he said, what, you know, Facebook, podcasting. But I'm like, podcasting, podcasting. <laughs> because, <laughs> well, there's multiple reasons, right? And I'm not saying video is not important either, but... You know, there is something intimate about podcasting because you can take it with you. And I'll tell you, here's a great example. The audio element of it is that I had bought an audio book from this gal, this author, and then I'm on her list now. And then I pre-ordered her next audio, which was an update from another book because I spent like seven hours with this woman in my head, loved her message. I listened to the stories. Like I was like, where can I go so I can go walk or drive or listen to the audio for a little bit? It's an intimate piece, but I told him that, you know, the benefit of, of the, it's just, you have to create something consistently and you have to remind, oh, the authority. Okay. I was like, where was I going with this? Because I told him, you know, interviewing somebody, it's a relationship builder. It blew my mind. And I'll, when I started the podcast, I had, I just wanted to have fun. That was it. I was a big podcast audio consumer. Like I go way back to books on tape in my car, like cassette tapes. Right. And so I told him, I said, do just like solo show interviews, but 
you're basically saying to somebody, I like what you're doing. You have a great message. Let me use my platform to share your message with my audience. I mean, it's a huge give. That's it. And then, you know, you say, do you want to get on other shows or how else can I help you? And you just, you have to be, it's a long game strategy, but connecting with people is giving first. And I can't tell you many times, like I had somebody reaching out for somebody that she was looking for to get him on a show. I think he was kind of like an internet lawyer and that's just not really my shtick. It's important, but I'm not personally, int- she emailed me every day for like three days in a row. I'm like, I'm not going to respond to you. And it's, it would have been so different if they had said, we've been listening to your podcast. You know, he listened to this episode about the, it's just, it blows my mind how many people just jump at you and say, gimme, 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 <laughs> you know? Yeah. So connecting with influencers, it's, what value can you bring? You know, I do that a lot or even, you know, with, with tools and stuff I like, I, I've been doing this for a while now, so I have no problem reaching out to get somebody onto a podcast or whatever, but even saying, look, let's do a live stream because I think you're going to get more eyes immediately on your software. I can then repurpose it, but I like what you're doing. Are you interested? I mean, it just, it's such a give. You have to be willing to give first before you get with the influencers. Yeah, because that's why I asked you this question, because when someone is building a new brand or they have some new product or service, they get over enthusiastic in reaching out with influencers and connecting with people. So some of them just come with a wall. Hey, this is my product. Could you promote it? And some would just throw in money also for it. So that's that's kind of a wrong way to, I think, approach things. It is. And I think the other piece is that you're forgetting that how many people are on Facebook a day, like a billion or some crazy number, right? There are so many amazing people that you can connect and do business with. You don't have to go after the names, right? All the time. Like one of my, the favorite things I love listening to are like case studies and stories of how somebody went from here to here. It's, it's, I'm a big, I love inspiration, right? So you start listening to that and, and you'll, you start opening and expanding into whether it's Facebook groups or something else and watch the dialogue and pay attention And you have no idea where that one relationship could connect with. And I mean, I've gotten on other podcasts and through other connections and relationships. And so remind yourself that you don't have to go for like, you know, you don't, I joke, right? I'm going to get Gary Vee on my show. It's like, it's all good, but I'm willing to just comment and consume and support and promote. And it's, it's now kind of become more of a personal challenge. Um, But, but it's one of those things that's like, I wouldn't just be like, hey, come on my podcast. I just, I wouldn't do it. And I trust that it'll all happen in divine right time and and all of that stuff. So be willing to build real relationships and make real connections because that's the other piece. Like all of a sudden you're like six degrees of separation. I had a friend say to me one time, he's like, God, dude, you know everybody. And it's because I made a lot of great connections when I was in that mastermind, but I've always been like, let me interview you. Let me interview you. I'm a giver first. And I mean, not to a fault, but it's the point where it's like, promote yourself more often. <laughs> but you just have no idea who knows who and how you can support other people. So show up and give first. Yeah, branding is a slow game, but a lot of people want to run very fast. So that is that is where they fall in the online world. So it's yeah, And not- build your tribe, right? If you're giving quality content, it will get recognized. And you have to do, we're going to get preachy, but you just got to do the work and... <laughs> optimize it and promote it and share it and do it again and do it again and do it again. Yeah. Brand is all about loyal following and the tribe, because if you have fancy logo and no one actually understand what the logo is all about or what the person who's behind that logo, it, it won't make any sense. So, or what happens? Do you see this really quick? Let me ask you this because doing site work, right? You'll have somebody that has this amazing site and all their packages and stuff. And you go back six months later and you realize you haven't done anything. Like, mm-hmm. what are you doing? Like you're not producing content, you're not written audio, but like, I don't see what you're doing. Stop talking about stuff. And who I, I did a, a interview the day, like people are always, you know, getting ready to get ready. It's like, yeah, I gotta hit publish. Yeah. Because like you mentioned about design and development, like web is, web is people are more focused on look, making things look beautiful, sophisticated, sassy, this and that. But then if you are not doing the work that will move forward your message, that brand look would not make any sense, right? Absolutely. And the bottom line is, you know, there are ugly sales pages with really good copy. Yeah. 
that convert way better than the most beautiful website. So, you know, if you can't grab someone's attention quickly, then it's irrelevant. Yep. It doesn't matter how pretty it looks. Words do the magic, not the design, I guess. Okay, Absolutely. let's dive into the toolbox of Kim Dayal. So what are your current five favorite tools that power your online business? Um, okay, so Siva, which was ConvertKit. And I, I would be curious on your thoughts on the name change too, but we'll be quick about this. Is Yeah, it's I, like, I, 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 okay, let's stick to Seva, well, it's it's an Indian name. It's 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 actually a Punjabi name, Punjabi language name, which means community service. And I was surprised, like, why did they choose this name? Because their most biggest chunk of their user would be English English speaking users, not the native Indians or English Indian language users. And I the meaning of this word doesn't resonate with what they are offering because Seva means community service. Community service in my you know native place which means it's a free service that you provide now i'm damn sure it's not going to be free right i'm they may even jack up the prices by adding more stuff into it because what i could read from their opening statement is just they're going to add more features to their offering so most likely what is what has happened is finding for alphabet domain name is so tough so they found seva and they just now they're trying to build a message like hey we found this domain name, right? So this is what we mean. Well, you know, what's funny is one, I love, I love the way Nathan Berry's stuff looks. I think he's got a really good eye first for UI and stuff. And it's funny because then I saw people in another group, I'm going to cancel it. I'm offended that they thought they could use this word and all of that stuff. And I I think so much energy goes into, I think their intention behind Seva is, is good. I think the intention is there, but I mean, stop to think about it. Like, Kajabi, what the bucket does that even mean? Yeah. Like I've never looked into what Kajabi means, right? And the, and the so, URL is not Kajabi.com. It's new Kajabi. Now, why it's did new they put Kajabi, new? right? Because the old one was heinous. And so whatever with the names, like I, I, I think it, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't have an opinion. And if something offends you, then no, don't do business with that company. But yeah. I come more from a perspective of, I think the intention is correct. I like to pay attention and watch how people do things, right? Watch how they market and stuff. And I may not choose to do business, but can I learn something from that? And, but anyways, I love it. I think it's easy to use. I'm happy with it. I like that they do, you know, ConvertKit was originally created for bloggers and creators. That was his whole point. And, you know, I do want to hit their event next year. They just had it. It's, it's craft and commerce or I think that's it. Um, because I, I like going to events where I can really dig in and learn, not a pitch fest or whatever. But so there's that survey slam. I love it. This is what I wanted my software to do. It's a WordPress plugin that allows you to segment your subscribers at point of optim with a simple survey. Uh, we'll be doing some free training on that. Many chat. I've gotten a little bit obsessed with messenger. They have an amazing free course. I've not even finished it. It's like 10 hours because what I do is I watch the course on one monitor and then I implement and then I watch and I need to be in there every day so I can get stuff done faster. I'm actually going to their event. And what I love about messenger marketing is it's conversational. It's all the, it, I thought it was kind of spammy at first. And then I realized, yeah. Oh, if you think, how would I engage and have a conversation? And then, you know, the spammers are gone. Like they already tried it last year, didn't like it, boom, left, right? Again, it's a long game. How can I figure out how to do this conversation? So I love ManyChat, Kajabi. I just, I love Kajabi. You know, it's, they've gone through because I was a founder of new Kajabi. So the price point is amazing that I have on, on my account. I just did it. I mean, I could have done all of this with WordPress. I just didn't want to deal with piecing stuff together. And then of course, WordPress is still, (laughs) you know, it's, it's my core. I will always keep my site and my content on WordPress. Coming back to Seva, you know, whether someone likes the rebrand or not, but this, they managed to create buzz even among people who do not knew what ConvertKit was and what it did. So Mm -hmm. Let's see how it pans out, but I'm sure they are going to add more new features because as of now, it's just like an email marketing, but I guess they want to expand because there are so many tools nowadays available to not just capture data, but how you process, analyze that data. That's the direction one needs to go to, you know, target right stuff to right people. Yeah. My guess is that 
all of the email platforms eventually, but the email service providers will be doing more of like survey slam so that yeah. you can really customize your messaging. And, but it does a lot more, I mean, which I haven't tested it, but I mean, you can put your convert kit code on a page. So if I've got a post about survey slam, which I'm just about done with that I can then, and someone comes, I can trigger an email sequence if they're on my list mm -hmm. and they visit that post. So there's, there's a lot of, which the tagging and all of that stuff that it's, I'm not an analytical person, but I know this stuff is really important. So it's just taking me a little longer to do some of the implementation, but um, yeah, I think the features are, they're, they're all coming. So next would be, what is your recommended web hosting service? I'm on liquid web. You know, they were a sponsor last year and it, they've been great for me. I'm super happy with them. I really wish though that they would do a smaller package for people that want one to three sites. Not everybody needs 10 sites, but at the same time, maybe they're just, that's not who they're targeting. Um, so liquid web most, I, I really believe, and I could be totally off on this, but I think there's a lot of managed WordPress hosting companies that all provide value. So I think you need to look at what kind of service you like. Like if you want to get on the phone with somebody, then maybe there's one that's not good for you. I prefer chat. If I can get on live chat, I'm, I'm happy. Um, so just, you know, fast managed WordPress hosting. There's so many out there, but I'm on liquid web. Recommended page builder or website builder or just sales landing page builder. I hate, I've fallen in love with breezy and it's spelled brizzy. I interviewed uh, Dini and of course, I love I love Beaver Builder. My site's on Beaver Builder. Thank you to you, which I'm going to give you a shout out to everybody. <laughs> Devendra did do my personal branded site, which is beautiful. Thank you. Um, yes, it's I could not be happier with it. Um, but so I was working uh, for a friend and I was testing Breezy and I really love their blocks. I, I, I have just found it super easy uh, to work with. So, I, I mean... Again, my heart is really with Beaver Builder because I love those guys. Thrive has been a big core part of my business. I like it for landing pages because to all the page builders, we need funnel pages for WordPress. The vendors heard me preach this for six months. I'm like, why are there, Thrive is the only company that does like opt-in, thank you, confirmation, webinar. Everybody else is like site pages, site pages. I'm like, oh, for the love, please somebody create funnel pages for WordPress because I did put my ClickFunnels account on hold. I'm like, I've got Kajabi. Do I need all this? But anyways, uh, so I'm kind of in love with Breezy. And your recommended email service, I guess we already know it, Seva. <laughs> Seva, yes. And, you know, and that's even one of those, like this kind of cornerstone content, like I'm doing this kind of long post on SurveySlam. I'm like, I think I want to do that with Seva and do it from the perspective of, okay, digging in and creating a tagging framework and segments and what does that mean? And so, like, I mean like three to 5,000 words with a video, so. Um, yeah, even I would be interested in checking out Seva, but I guess they are yet to launch it in a full public way. They are still in ConvertKit mode as of now. So. Well, yeah, it's like I log into my site and I'm all, oh, there's new colors. Like <laughs> like when I log into my account, I mean, I'm like, oh, it's happening. It's happening. So it's not <laughs> happened just yet, but it's coming. Yeah, and there's no fixed date. I, th I think they didn't announce any date for that either. So let's see. And the most important question, your podcasting gear. Now you've been podcasting for almost like three, four years. How many years? Five. Oh, five years. Well, <laughs> you need to have a party now. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> so what is well, your I favorite? Think I'm actually going to up, up really quick. I'm going to up the episodes to two a week because I have too many in the can. I'm like, I got too much stuff I want to talk about now. <laughs> yeah, more the better. Like I, I see a lot, lot of people doing it, like people who used to, you know, put one episode per week. Now they are pushing it to two episodes per week. Like they will have some different flavor in one episode yeah. that that would be a solo episode. And the second would be like getting an expert talking about the things they do. So it's yeah. good, more the better. So what is your podcasting gear? Like my camera software services uh, that you use? Okay. So this is a Heil the PR 40. And you and I were talking about this before we started recording. I started with the Yeti and I used that for three years until I was like, okay, clearly you're committed to this. So then it was like a Christmas present to me to get the new arm and the, this, and because it also requires a mixer, it's not a USB mic, um, pop filter, all that stuff. So here's this, the camera I have is a Logitech. It's a C920. C yeah, yeah, it's a good one. It's HDA. I've had this for, I don't know, three or four years too. Um, I record with Zencaster, but I know you keep saying for me to do video. So I probably will be stepping in 
some of that. It just depends on what it is. Um, I use Zencaster and then, you know, editing. I used to use Audition. It's just more than I need. I will literally edit in Camtasia. I will be passing off the editing. Back. Like I had an editor for years with the WordPress chick and he was wonderful. My daughter is a film student. She's got her own podcast clients. I will just pay her to edit. I just need to get back on a schedule. Like I had that window. So um, there's so many tools. I'm on Buzzsprout for hosting. I think I'm going to move to Castos. And um, simply for one, the price point, I think it's like unlimited for like $15 a month. And I like I, the fact that- I think they up their it, price. They're, it's now $19. I think. Still cheap, yeah. right? Still it's $19. Cheaper. Yeah. And Buzzsprout's not- it's great. It's easy to use. And you could submit, like I've submitted my podcast to Spotify through Buzzsprout. They've been great. But what I like with Castos is I believe I can do sort of private audio. That's not a part of the podcast. So as an example, with the free course I did, I'm paying for SoundCloud to put all, cause I stripped the audio out of all the training to stick it in there. And I wanted a good looking audio player, not just an ugly MP3 player. And so I think with Castos, I could do that. So then I could get rid of SoundCloud. Because all, it's all private audio. I don't need to be paying for SoundCloud. And it's optimized for WordPress. Like they build their platform to specifically for WordPress users. Like they have a complimentary plugin that would help you, you know, set up things. A lot of people use it and they say good things about it. Yeah. So now let's explore the lighter side of Kim Dayal. Like <laughs> should a creative have a pet cat, dog, or no pet at all? My preference is a dog. I have two. But again, this is that self-awareness, right? <laughs> like, here, it's funny because like I grew up with a dog and, and then we had a family dog and then sadly she died, you know, she was like 13 years old or whatever. And I'm like, okay, I'm not gonna, I'm done with pets, whatever. Because I thought my kids are almost out of the house. I'm gonna travel. Then my daughter's like, mom, they've got free puppies at PetSmart and, or Petco. And I thought, Oh, and, it, and you know what it was? She sent me a picture of a puppy and it had the same name as our previous dog. I'm like, this is a sign. So I get one. <laughs> and then she's like my shadow. So then I'm at another pet store and there was a dog who just looked sad. And so it brought her home and they're like best friends. And I, cause it was like, I just, she would be really nutty if she didn't have a buddy, but I love them. They're my buddies, my girls. <laughs> <laughs> How many cups of coffee in a day to keep your creative mind super charged. this is a big cup but i do two of these um and, and if you, i'm at, like and you fill it to the top uh yeah it's pretty high up there yeah <laughs> so you need to multiply by two right yeah well and then it just depends like if i'm when it's it's gonna be like 104 today or something but sometimes it's nice to go get like an iced coffee like to treat myself in the afternoon but i rarely like i cannot drink caffeine past I can't have coffee past like two unless it's decaf <laughs> and my stomach doesn't like it that much either. So I also have my water. I drink a ton of water. <laughs> okay. Now next question is not that light. Now this happens a lot of places, online world, offline world. So we'll stick to the online world. Like how do you deal with super negative people? Ignore them or get back with vengeance. Well, if you had asked me this five years ago, it would have been a very different answer today. That would be vengeance uh, five years ago. <laughs> well, I never, I, I never aired it publicly, right? So I, I have my trusted friends that I can vent to. Um, but I've done a lot of personal work too. So I realize it's so much more about them than it is about me. It, here, and so now I just send them love and I feel for them. Like I wish you the best and I just ignore them. And I make sure to remove them from my space to whatever way I can because you know it's kind of that whole notion of like trying to poison someone else by drinking the poison yourself like yeah. you can't you can't do it right so I do that but here's an example god it was I don't know three four years in to the wordpress chick and somebody kept emailing me these nasty do you not know the meaning of copyright because I was using wordpress right I didn't know any because I, when I first started I was like oh it's free software whatever WordPress very kindly emailed me and said, you can't use it in the URL. And they, at the time they said I could use it in my header. Um, it's probably changed now, but so I said, okay, great. Can you give me a few months? They said, no problem. WordPress was super great about it, but this person emailed me under fake email addresses three or four times. So first of all, I'm like, you need to get a hobby because why <laughs> this is important to you. 
I don't know. So I have a very sarcastic side that I don't always show. So I get a little bit snotty about that. So what I did was I did a public blog post that said note to a snarky reader. Cause I'm like, look, stop emailing me. It's getting taken care of. Go get a life. <laughs> really, you know? <laughs> and so that was kind of fun in a way because I still tried to come from the place of look, my intention was not to rip off WordPress. A lot of people <clears throat> did it. It's like, Please, I, I, I will never be the person to vendor that pushes negativity in the world. I cannot do it. I will not play that game because my well-being and sense of self is way more important than your opinion of me, to be honest with you. Yeah, because even in, uh, like in the offline world, you can't be friends with everyone. Same goes with the online world. You can't be friends with everyone. But the, the crazy part in the online world is that you are behind your computer. So that person is people are a little more shameless in the online world because they know he can't catch my, he can't even touch my hand. So forget about catching me. So things do go out of hand sometimes. Yeah. And can I tell you it's, and I'm sure they're, they're there, but it's probably been a couple years since I've gotten anything negative online. Truly. Like I don't, I mean, I've had, like I shared something in Gary V's like two years ago and someone's like, you're, you're an idiot for sharing this. And I was like, <laughs> I don't know who you are. Bye. You know? <laughs> and so it's, it's just funny to me that I just, you know, what's weird to vendor? Like I don't, it's kind of like when you see people who have opinions about marketing and I don't care if you want to pose on a Lamborghini, do it. Whether you own it or not, that's your space, not mine. It's not going to offend me. I don't look for reasons to be offended. And I think what happens is a lot of people, they look for reasons to get offended when they're not happy with their own life. Truly, like yeah. when you're doing your thing, you may be like, eh, not my cup of tea, but to each his own. That's completely how I operate. And so when I'm happy with where I'm at, I find way less issue with anybody else. And because I've been doing really what I wanted to do for the last years, and I mean, I've been through a lot personally, just in the last few years, that it's just like nothing is more important than feeling good. Yeah. Period. I want to be happy. I want to feel grounded. I want to make the world a better place. However I can do that. So it's like, I don't even attract those, those people don't even show up in my world anymore, truly. And I've gotten rid of friendships unintentionally really quick. Like I've had a couple friendships that just went sideways and left. And I thought, okay, thank you universe. You're the people that don't serve me. And it wasn't mean or it's just time to move on. Right. And so, life is good. <laughs> Yeah, be happy. So what makes Kim Dayal happy in the online and offline world? <laughs> Simple pleasures. I'm so not a high maintenance person. Well, I don't know. I love massages. Like I could do one <laughs> every week. Would be right. That would um, be offline world, right? <laughs> that would be offline world. Online, this, like connection and support and inspiring people. Like it never gets old for someone to say thank you or you inspired me or this made a difference. That never gets old. Or to see somebody finally pull the trigger and hit publish or eek, I did it. You know, like that totally makes, like it gives me goosebumps. It makes me really, really happy. Offline, I'm really blessed. Like I have the most amazing family and you know, I'm super tight with my kids. My dogs bring me a ton of joy. They're just, personalities are great. That and you know, and taking the time I don't know. I feel like I've gifted myself time in a way of I've gotten back into art and I'm doing watercolors and then I've got my secret project. Um, but just taking the time to do that. I love going to the movies. I like happy music. I'm, I'm really, I like reading. It's, I'm just being present. I've learned to be present. If I need to check out, it feels like this luxurious gift I've given myself. If I want to be social, I'm like, okay, let's go do something, you know? So I don't know. It's my life makes me happy. Wow, Did it did you did you say a secret project or something else? What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. You know the name of it. There's no way I'm going to trip over secret project or <laughs> because a lot of people would be listening the audio of this and they may not even realize that we are recording it over video. So I can see you. Okay, so totally can. <laughs> closing thoughts. Like, if someone just decides, okay, I'm going to build an authority brand what advice you would give like in one or two lines to that person to get things in the right direction? The first thing is you have to trust yourself. If something doesn't feel right, don't do it. If, if you don't feel like I want to start vlogging, don't. 
truly, because it's, it's not going to come across correctly. It's not going to come across effectively. So you have to trust yourself. I don't care if you're a coach, mentor, guru, whatever, everybody else is telling you that you need to podcast and it doesn't resonate with you. Don't do it. If you do not trust yourself, you're going to take longer to get to where you want to go. I did it, you know, and I finally came full circle. And as soon as I was like, what do I want to do? Boom. Things took off. Um, did I, did you have another question or just a couple other sentences? So trust yourself is one. Um, and then the other thing is you just, you have to do the work. I, I wish yeah. that there was this, there is, I don't know what it is about the internet that people think there's no work involved. Can, it's, can it's, I give you a quick little it's story? It's easy. It's easy. Like, like a lot of people would in the offline world, Oh, he just sits in front of computers and some of them would assume he's just playing video games. And I just don't ever play video games to be honest. Right. Well, you know, it's like the only video games I'd want to play are with my mom, which we grew up with Nintendo. We always had the latest Nintendo because my mom was awesome at video games. Um, but here's a great little story. So a friend of mine came back and I know we're running late here, but a friend of mine that had started his online business around the same time I did like 2009. And he is the best friend of one of my best friends, her, her husband. Okay. So like I've known this guy for since I was like 18. So we, we connected and he was doing something like we'd been to events and stuff. So he shows back up and like, Hey, happy birthday, whatever recently. Then we hop on the phone to catch up and he's showing me all the stuff he's doing. And again, though, this is what it is. It's like, well, I've had this landing page created and I'm going to create this membership. And I had Fiverr guys create the content and I, and I'm like, just shaking my head. I'm like, that's not going to work. Like the market is matured. You can't just outsource every element of your business. You have to start showing up and, and working through things. This whole like PLR, uh, private label rights, right? You can take that content for ideas and then rip it apart and say, oh, I can pull this and I'm going to put my spin on this, right? But this idea that you can just buy an internet business in a box uh, uh it's not 1995. Like you can't stuff keywords into stuff. So it's be willing to do the work. So you flip it. And if you need the money now, then say, what do I need to do to make the income? Whether I have to go work at Starbucks from, you know, four in the morning till 10, do it. Who cares? I mean, I've been in that point, like, should I go do this? Should I write for, I don't know, should I go see if I can write for GoDaddy? And it's like, eh, no, no, you got this. I mean, there's been windows, right? So you do that or you say to yourself, okay, I can do, you know, I'm going to go Craigslist stuff. I'm going to, I'm going to go buy stuff and sell it on Facebook, but you have to have that core and you have to have the structure and the discipline to say, I'm going to write every day. I'm going to publish every day. I'm going to reach out to somebody every day. And it's all these little tiny things that start stacking up. And all of a sudden it's that compound interest effect. And you realize, oh my God, I have a huge network. I have this amazing Facebook community that is connected. Like these people are connecting and having calls mm -hmm. offline and, and like friendships are being developed. And it's like, holy moly, like that's like leaving a legacy in the world. Right. But my intention was just show up and connect, like go back to being a kid. Like you didn't go out to play with the objective just to win the game. You wanted to have fun, get back involved in the process and then, and share what you're doing. It's, it's so not rocket science. People want it to be either super difficult or, or I should, this one thing is going to put me over the edge. This course, this mentor, this thing is going to give me the income I want. It just, it doesn't happen. That thing may be a catalyst, but it's never, ever going to be just one thing. Like meaning something you buy or implement. It's doing the work every day. That was so not a couple sentences. <laughs> I'm sorry. And, and this reminds me of one uh, very important thing be human and people will buy your stuff not because it's your stuff because you, but you are behind that stuff like they will buy your stuff because of you not because of your stuff so you got to put your personality your stamp whether it's your personal brand or generic brand you will still have to put your unique stamp on it right and like i said way back like who you are is the only thing that makes you different like we can all put up a website, a product, a sales page, a funnel, whatever you want to, we can all make videos, we can all make podcasts, but. Hi from Fiverr. Are, right, yeah, um, but it's who you are that makes you unique. So it's Dr. Seuss, no one is youer than you. Okay, it was an amazing chat. Thanks for 
sparing some time for this call. Thank you very much, Kim, for the show. Thank you for having me. It was, it's always fun to chat with you, but this is fun that we get to do it on video. <laughs> Have a good day. Bye-bye. You too.